from the majestic hills that surround Brookville Lake in Dearborn County to the surreal lowland swamps of Posey County, southern Indiana's landscape formed over billions of years as a tilted, physiographic plain that, while many of its landforms are treacherously precipitous, is in the geologic sense a rather soft, gentle descent. On average, the southwest tilt follows a half-degree slope. Over the 200 or so miles a great blue heron would fly from Brookville to Mount Vernon, elevations drop only 800 feet. Along the Ohio River Bank, nearly 400 twisting miles from Lawrenceburg past Evansville, they drop a little less than 100 feet. Like all of the state, Indiana's southern landscape is underlain with layers of sedimentary bedrock, formed through the ages as various materials compressed into limestone, dolomite, siltstone, sandstone, and shale. Depending on the location, from east to west, the rock at or near the surface is between 505 million and 266 million years old. The youngest rock formations that underlie the Goose Pond Cypress Slough in southwest Indiana predate the dinosaurs' arrival by nearly 35 million years. Indeed, southern Indiana's landforms run the gamut, a dizzying array of highlands and lowlands forged through the eons by epic forces that included tectonic plate shifts, continental-sized glaciers, erosion, and climatic shifts. Roughly 350 million years ago, before the Earth's plates shifted the landmass north, much of southern Indiana occupied the bottom of a shallow inland sea near the equator. The world-famous limestone quarried in Monroe and Lawrence counties formed through the eons as sea-dwelling crustaceans died and their shells solidified on the sea floor. Some 300 million years ago, coal swamps covered the southwestern part of the state with vegetation that transformed over millions of years into the coal that is still mined there today. Several old coal mines are now fish and wildlife areas that support both common and rare species. Southern Indiana's physiography began its most relevant transformation roughly 700,000 years ago during the Pleistocene Epoch, or the Ice Age, when massive ice sheets from northern and eastern Canada formed the Ohio River Valley by blocking and redirecting the region's drainage patterns. Before that, the water flowed from North Carolina through northern Indiana to the Mississippi River in western Illinois. According to the Indiana Geological Survey, no other event since the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago can compare to the Ice Age in terms of the profound effect it had on our landscape and the natural environment in which we live today. In fact, virtually all of societal affairs are in one way or another affected by some facet of the Ice Age. The Ice Age began two million years ago, lasted until roughly 10,000 years ago, and is divided into four periods. Scientists believe as many as 11 glaciers, said to be as much as a half mile to a mile thick, ground Indiana's surface through the ages into the configurations of hills, valleys, flats, lakes, and rivers it is today. Neither the Wisconsin nor the Illinoisan events covered southern Indiana's rugged hill country, known as the unglaciated or driftless region, whose boundary forms an upside-down U from New Albany north to Martinsville and then south to the Martin Dubois County line before jutting southwest to the Wabash River just north of the Ohio. The Wisconsin advance, which stopped north of Martinsville along an uneven line from Brookville to Terre Haute, is responsible for the flat expanses of northern Indiana and the wildly diverse landforms in the south. While the unglaciated region was untouched by the Wisconsin ice sheets, over the past 100,000 years or so, their meltwaters carved the bedrock into the hills and hollers and canyons and flatlands that today comprise the diverse southern Indiana landscape. The entire southern Indiana landscape is drained by the Ohio and Wabash River basins, whose creeks, streams, and rivers inevitably flow southwest. Every ounce of water that reaches the confluence of the state's two mightiest rivers has ultimately flowed through at least one of their tributaries. The 981-mile Ohio, named after the Seneca word for Great River, bears little resemblance to the serpentine waterway that 17th century explorers dubbed the Beautiful River. Today, it's more like a series of lakes, controlled by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers through a system of locks and dams, which are engineered to control flooding and facilitate navigation. Four rivers drain the region and feed the Ohio, the Whitewater, Blue, Little Blue, and Anderson, along with numerous creeks with names like 14 Mile, Indian, Pigeon, Potato Run, Knob, Mill, and Turtle. The Blue River, the state's first officially designated scenic river, flows 90 miles from north of Salem in Washington County through Harrison County Hill and Cave Country to the Ohio in the Harrison Crawford State Forest through some of the state's most pristine landscapes. 
The 475-mile Wabash, the official state river, drains 90% of Indiana's land mass, 33,000 of its 36,000 total square miles, from its source a couple miles east of the state line near Fort Recovery, Ohio, to its discharge into the Ohio River at the tri-state junction of Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky. The Wabash's primary southern Indiana tributaries are the White and Potoka Rivers. The White River's east and west forks originate near one another, east and a little north of Indianapolis, not far from the Ohio state line. They drain a third of the state. By the time the Potoka meets the Wabash just a mile south of the White River in Gibson County at a point known as Hell's Neck, it has completed a 167-mile journey that began on a ridge southeast of Paoli. On its eastern reaches, the Potoka's flow is dammed in Dubois County, just west of the Orange County line, to create the 8,800-acre Potoka Lake. Along 30 miles of river in the center, the Potoka National Wildlife Refuge permanently protects 8,000 acres of forests, grasslands, wetlands, ponds, sloughs, and swamps.